All right, in this screencast, I'm going to look at Jupyter Notebook inside of Visual Studio Code. And Jupyter Notebook, very popular tool for data scientists, but it's also integrated into Visual Studio Code and makes for um, a really nice user experience. And it's also easy to get a data science um, development environment set up using Visual Studio Code. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my terminal here and I'll see my project directory and I'll make one and I'm just going to call it pandas for now. CD into pandas and I'll create a new virtual environment. And with that finished, I will code dash r dot to restart Visual Studio Code and open up this current folder inside of it. All right, in here, I can now associate this virtual environment with this folder or this project by going by uh, pressing command shift P and looking for the command Python select interpreter. Now this is going to look for interpreters on my machine that it can find or virtual environments and in general if you have one in the same directory that's open in the um, in the project explorer here it will find it and star it. And now if you look down in the uh, lower left hand corner, you'll see that I've that I'm now associated with that particular Python virtual environment. And if I uh, press control back tick again to open up a new terminal, you'll notice that what it does is it um, selects the correct activation script for me. Um, and here's the cool thing is that if I do something like if I open up um, the command prompt, then it found the batch file. All right, so with this in mind, uh, now I have um, the virtual environment. I want to create a new Jupyter Notebook. So I'll do Command-Shift-P again, and I'll type Jupyter. And I've used this one before, but uh, Create New Jupyter Notebook. That will create the new Jupyter Notebook. Now, so the Jupyter Notebook also needs to be associated with and a virtual environment, but it needs to be associated with a virtual environment that has several uh, special packages installed. So I'm going to go over here to select kernel and I'll select the virtual environment that I just created. And now I will try to run something inside of this cell. So I'll type import OS to import the OS package from the Python standard library. And then I'll click run here to execute the code inside of this cell. And it's going to say, hey, you need this IPy kernel package. And I can click install to install it. And this is going to take a while, so I'll speed up the video. OK, with that finished, now I can click run again. And this time it, and this time it works as signified by the green check mark. OK, there are other things that I can do here. So I could create new cells for code or markdown. So I'll go ahead and click a code cell. And I'll say os.listdir, I get my um, code completion. I also get uh, docstring if it exists for help. And I'll just look at the contents of this current directory here. And you'll see that I'm, and that time what I did is I pressed shift enter. And if I press shift enter, it will execute the current cell and move to the next cell. And if there's not a next cell, it will automatically create one for me. So let's try something a little bit more involved here. And I will go down here and do a pip install faker to bring in that faker command, or that faker package rather, that I've been using in other videos. And with that installed, I can just say from faker import faker. And I don't even have to restart. I get my IntelliSense. It's really, really nice. So this prevents any interruptions in the workflow. And now I can create a new fake. And I would be able to do something like fake.word. I'll be able to see the results immediately. Let's, let's try doing the standard store shopping cart. And what we're going to need is we need a list of um, customers and a, a list of items that they've purchased, line items. So uh, let's create a list of potential customers that we could that we could select from. So of course we've seen I think the fake first name which will just return a first name. And what I want to do is I want to get a uh, pool of first names to use. So I'm just going to say customers 
I'll say fake dot first name for underscore in range and we'll get what 25 of them I guess okay now notice that down here in this pane I have this um, Jupyter variables panel now so what's going to do is it's going to list all of the variables that I have and their potential and their potentially their values so I can let me see if I can expand this here get my cursor right on there you can see I have customers here which is a list of size 25 and here's a preview of the value and then I also have fake which is of, of type faker so that's another um, feature that of using Jupyter inside of Visual Studio Code let's also get a list of line items here and this one what I'll do is I'll use a different method called pyint uh, on the faker package and it'll have a min value notice also I get a, a code suggestion for my keyword arguments and I want this to be one and I want the max value to be nine and then I'm going to add 99 to that and I'll do um, we'll do what a hundred of these whoops for in range 100 okay and then now what I'll do is I'll say names fake dot word and I'm going to use this ext word list keyword argument to say select from the customers and we will also create 100 of those and now line items and names show up in the Jupyter variables pane all right so that gives us enough to get started and um, in a future video I'll uh, pull up pandas and show how you can actually and show some other features of using uh, Jupyter Notebook with Visual Studio Code.